Hey everybody, I'm Brett Walco with Actors Reporter here with our special comedy in Vegas. And we're here today with a comedian that uh, has more credits than I can count from Entourage to King of Queens to his acclaimed role and go, Jimmy Schubert, everybody. Hey, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, man. This is where we pretend we don't know each other for the camera. No. <laughs> well, it's good to be here. Earlier in the week, I was in the hospital all day. Not for me, this girl I'm seeing, she was doing some modeling work, she was doing a photo shoot, and she got her ankle bracelet caught in her earring and she fell off a pool table. <laughs> She's gonna be fine. She's a professional. You started out as a magician when you were little, is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah, keep that under your hat. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I started out as a magician. I was an prof accomplished professional magician by the time I was 15. And then uh, by the time I was 18, I just kind of like hung up the wand and retired to rabbit. And I just wanted to find the room and, and go do stand up. And I started in Philadelphia doing some of these uh, yeah, open mic nights in Philly, which were really, I mean, if you weren't funny in Philly, you know, you knew it immediately. And then come out to the comedy store and started working at the door. And you would work the door so you'd see everybody go up on stage and they would tell the, and you would think of a funny tagline or stuff. So it started like that. And, and Yakov Smirnoff gave me some money. And then uh, Jimmy Walker would say, you know, he had a program, he would write me 50 jokes, I'll give you $500. And, you know, so then it started like that. So you started writing and getting into it. But you really got to watch some of the best guys in the country. And you were trading punchlines with the best guys in the country. I mean, everybody from, you know, it's Arsenio Hall and Robin Williams and Sam Kinison and Richard Pryor. I watched Richard Pryor come in and start wow. with, like, five minutes and build it into, like, a 45-minute set. Really? I mean, I mean, obviously, before I got sick, yeah, it was like, you know, like some people go to college. For me, that was my college. I went to the comedy store and, and learn how to be funny. It was a hell of an education. You do USO tours, which is which is wonderful as well. Is that a little rattling, you know, trying to be out there and keep them funny, but at the same time, there's all that craziness going on? Uh, you definitely definitely put you on point, for sure. <laughs> you know, you, you're, you're traveling, you got a Kevlar vest on and a helmet, and you're flying into a war zone. But, uh, you know, uh, I did it because, uh, you know, the, the, the really the way I feel is those guys make tremendous sacrifices, you know, defending uh, our country and our way of life. And, and it was the least I could do as an American citizen. If I could offer my services in some way, I thought that uh, I felt compelled to go over and entertain those guys, you know. Let's let's jump forward to the, the wonderful Playboy Club here at the Palms here in Las Vegas. Uh, you you play here a lot. It's it's obviously a fun room. You got half naked girls. You got uh, well half naked Vegas. Yeah, well it's uh, you know you gotta love Vegas. And I've been coming here for years. Obviously, I used to tour and open for Sam Kinison, and we did a lot of the we did the Dunes, which has now been blown up. But uh, I remember we were there for three weeks, and we would come here, and it was madness. There was, you know, lots of drugs and, you know, strip clubs and uh, strippers. And, uh, you know, and one night we, we did three shows. Kennison, Vegas? That doesn't sound right at all. Uh, strippers and drugs? What are you talking about? You're fibbing again. But we... Uh, yeah, we had a, but those were the old days back when that was kind of cool to do. Right. Now it's not. Right. And uh, don't do drugs, kids. Come to Vegas where you're able to make all the worst decisions in your life and we'll encourage you. You can get married to some hooker, you can drink and spend your kids' college tuition. Come to Vegas. Woo! No, it's uh, it's awesome. I like coming here. It really is. No. You should do a commercial for Vegas. I love comedy because it really, uh, it, it, I, of all the art forms, I think it's the most difficult art form to do. And it gets treated like a stepchild to the arts, which incenses me to no end. I've been doing it for 20 years, and it scares the hell out of me still. You know, and I'm a, a capable professional. But, uh, you know, the, I just love that people think, they could, oh, I'll just jump into it, like reality stars and Kato Caitlin. Right. That, it, it drives me insane. I don't feel any safer when I travel. I just have to run this gauntlet of <laughs> retards before I can actually get on the plane now. The TSA. What does that stand for? Take scissors away? It, what, one thing that's great about your shows, you don't just do a show at an audience. You really kind of, you know, when you're in your shows, you feel like you're part of the show and you play with the room and it's a different kind of show. And like you, yeah, you can give it to me later. Uh, you got, <laughs> you <laughs> well, I have a real passion for it. I love to do it. I love to make people laugh. It's my favorite sound in the world. And uh, I really give it everything I got. Like, you can go see Bruce Springsteen, who does four hours of rock anthems, or you can so, go see the Gin Blossoms do their one hit. I mean, what would you do? I would go see Bruce Springsteen every time. Now, before we go, I do want to mention one thing you, you give to a really wonderful cause. Uh, and I wanted to, you to tell us a little bit about it uh, that you started uh, uh, for your, your brother. Oh, it was my cousin, Joe. Your cousin, I'm sorry. Yeah, he was, uh, they have an athletic scholarship. Um, you know, he passed away when he was 12. So we, uh, 
we did, we did this golf outing every year, and they do, do, do and we've raised funds for it over a million dollars for charity. To, and it's based on uh, athletic scholarship and uh, uh, athletics and academics. And they, they they've helped a lot of helped a lot of folks out in Philadelphia, which is where I grew up. So it's kind of near and dear to my heart. So I kind of go back and uh, support it and um, help it help it out every year. What's the name of it again? It's the Joe Casey uh, Junior uh, Joe Casey Junior Scholarship Fund. Check that out. Check out jimmyschubert.com. Yes. Yes, and if you're here in Vegas this week, check them out uh, at the Playboy Club here at the Wonderful Palms. And uh, thank you for coming, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm Brett with Actors Reporter, and we'll see you with Comedy in Vegas. I mean, I don't know how any comic could possibly concentrate before their show. Jimmy, come on in here. So it's, uh, you know, it's imperative that you have a little place where you can go and work on your set list or work on your notes, especially if you're trying new stuff. You know, it's imperative, but you're right. Some places have them like this where it's comfortable, it's nice. Uh, they have a little cooler full of beverages there. I was gonna say, if you look at the cooler, it's always the same. There's liquor, soda, and Red Bull. Uh, well, this is Brett from The Toilet with Actors Reporter, and we'll see you next time. Have fun, Johnny. Enjoy yourself.